Alright, today we're going to be looking at Microsoft Image Composite Editor. I have a 64-bit Windows 10 machine, so I'm going to download the 64-bit version. Uh, the installer is pretty simple. Just click Next and Next again. You might get prompted with the User Access Control window. And we can go ahead and launch the software. Image Composite Editor is a free program that allows you to stitch together either photos or videos uh, to make a panorama. The first thing you want to do when you download the software is go into the settings gear at the top right. You'll want to make sure that you have plenty of free space wherever the temporary cache directory is. Uh, the software will use a lot of space when it's stitching the photos together. So this drive, it currently has 80 gig free. That should be enough for the small panoramas that I'm going to show you today. If you were doing a large panorama, you might want to put it on an external hard drive. You can also change the memory consumption limit. I'm not going to have anything else running besides the screen recorder program. Uh, so I've got about 6 gig of free space, so I'm going to give it 5,500 megabytes of memory. I already have some panoramic uh, images that I took on a beach vacation last week and I've got two of those that I'm going to show you here. The first one was a, uh, a pier that went out and you can see we have 19 photos here. We're going to stitch those together and then I have another one that is a pretty neat reflection of the beach and the horizon. So let me show you what one of these photos looks like. So that's pretty cool. There's a total of 17 items. I just quickly snap them left, right, up and down. Uh, and I'd like to see what that looks like as a bigger photo. So we have our photos. And for this, for the ones I'm showing you today, I just used a Sony Cybershot uh, DSC. I believe it's a 220W model. It's an 18 megapixel camera. And that's sufficient for what we're doing. So if we go to the Image Composite Editor, do New Panorama from Images. I'm going to browse to where the images are saved. And the first one, let's do uh, the, the little pier. So I'm going to select them all and then click Open. So it's going to take a minute to process those. So now you can see uh, we have a preview of those images. And right now I'm going to leave this on Auto Detect. For camera motion. You can see there's several different options here. Uh, auto detect has never failed me before. If you get down here and you've got a tripod or you've got a gigapan device, you can manually select how the order of the pictures were taken. So we're going to leave it at simple panorama, auto detect, and click next. It's going to align the images. Depending on how many photos you have, it could take a while to accomplish this. The part that takes the longest is uh, compositing the images. So I'm going to pause the video and resume it when we get to that step. Okay, so we just got finished compositing the images and you can see what it's done here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit on it so we can see it a little better. So you can see I'm here taking the photos. Um, you can see we missed a little bit around the edges and I'm going to leave it as a cylinder. There's a lot of different options. You can click on them and you'll see a live preview of how the image would appear. You can even scroll left to right. So if you had a true 360 degree photo, uh, you'd be able to spin it around in the preview. Down at the bottom you can notice that it, the camera software says it spans 180.1 degrees. That's not exactly true. Um, it depends, if you've got a 360 photo, it's pretty good about generating the actual uh, degrees that the image spans, but for a smaller one that's 180 or less, it doesn't work very well, but that doesn't, that doesn't really matter. So we're just going to leave it as a cylinder and click next. So projecting, it goes pretty quick, again it depends on how many images you have total. Now here's something that's really cool. If you do auto crop, it's going to select the best possible resolution. Uh, means there's no empty spots in the photo. I'm going to hit no crop. 
but I'm going to click auto completion. So pay attention to how the photo looks now. I'm going to hit auto complete and we'll come back in just a minute to see what that looks like. Alright, so we're back and you can see the difference in the photo. I'm going to uncheck auto completion so we can see it again here. So that's what we started with. And then with auto completion, this ended up as the result. Look at the difference there. The software automatically generated what the photo should look like. That's pretty cool. So we can do auto crop and hit next. So we took the, the images that we had originally uh, and converted them into one image. So I'm going to export this. I always change the quality to 100 because I want it to be flawless. And we've created a 71.74 megapixel photo. So I'm going to go ahead and export it and I'm just going to save it in that original photo folder. Sorry. The export process is pretty quick. Alright, so let's go back here and look at that again. So we took 19 photos and turned them into one. Let's see how it previews. So you can really tell the detail that this is captured by stitching the photos together. And honestly it's pretty difficult to tell where the stitching actually took place. You can see a little bit right here where the software stitched it where that piece was missing also here. But overall when you're looking at it you're not going to notice that. So let's go ahead and do the other one together here. I'm going to go back to Image Composite Editor and I'm just going to close it and discard. I find this is the best way uh, closing out of the program completely before starting on your new image. The reason being that temporary files that we looked at earlier that saved in memory so it's using a lot of uh, resources on your machine. So let's go ahead and do this other photo I'm just going to click next. It's going to align the image, composite them, and then we'll come back. Alright, so this one has finished. see we have a lot of empty space here. Let's do autocomplete on this one and see how it turns out. Alright, so we can see that autocomplete's completed. Let's look at let's look at how it appeared before. And this again was after autocomplete. It's pretty impressive how it can calculate that image and um, just complete the missing pieces pretty flawlessly. All right, there's one more I want to show you. This is going to be how to take a video and import it. So I just took a quick video outside here and we're going to pull that in to see what it looks like and we're going to do new panorama from video and this is an MP4 video you can set the end or start and end markers on the video by dragging So the software is going to process it here. It's going to analyze the video, align the images, and then uh, composite the image just like we did before. So I'm going to pause it until we get... Alright, so our images are now aligned. And we can go ahead and click Next. And I'm going to tell it No Crop and Next. I'm not going to do autocomplete on this one. It would take a while. I'm going to go ahead and do Export to Disk. 
and I'm just going to right click on the photo, rotate right, and let's see how this looked. Using video doesn't produce nearly as a clear as image of uh, to create a panorama, panorama as when using photos. So you can tell the quality is not good at all. I wouldn't waste my time using a photo or a video rather. In the next video I'm going to show you how to take the panoramic images we made and use a software called KR Pano uh, to convert them to zoomable HTML5 uh, panoramas. So I'm going to show you one of those here real quick. So this is one that I made out of the photos I took from the beach. Uh, this one wasn't the best. You can kind of see how you can zoom in on it. You can move it around. Kind of like if you notice in Facebook how you've got 360 um, videos, you can do the same type of thing here. So that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do in the next video.